This well done study by Dr. Saristo and her colleagues is timely and very important as the use of vascularized lymph node transfer is gaining popularity to address lymphedema. For patients with upper limb lymphedema, lymph nodes are harvested from the groin region and transferred to the axilla with the idea that these transfer lymph nodes will promote lymphangiogenesis and reestablish lymphatic function. One major concern with this approach is that harvesting lymph nodes from the groin may lead to development of lymphedema of the corresponding leg. While most claim that lymphedema does not develop in the donor leg, there are anecdotal reports that donor leg lymphedema can and does occur, although it is temporary and resolved spontaneously. In this study, of 10 patients available for postoperative lymphocentigraphy, in six patients, the lymphatic flow was noted to be slower in the donor limb than in the non-operative limb, with two patients noted to have significantly abnormal lymphatic function. However, clinically none of these patients demonstrated any difference in the circumference and none reported any symptoms that could be associated with the development of lymphedema. While it is encouraging to know that clinically significant lymphedema was not observed, it is also concerning that there was indeed reduced lymphatic function in most of the donor legs. What are the implications of this finding? Is the reduced lymphatic function clinically insignificant temporary phenomenon, or are these patients now prone to developing lymphedema of the donor leg over their lifetime? Considering that the incidence of lymphedema is relatively low, even after complete lymph node dissection, and that in many patients there is a latency period before the onset of lymphedema that can range from months to years, a study involving more patients with longer follow-up is warranted. This information is critical, as even if the risk of developing lymphedema of the donor leg is small, that alone might be justification enough to not use growing lymph nodes to treat lymphedema. Patients who are already suffering from lymphedema would certainly not want to risk developing lymphedema in another limb. In summary, this study brings attention to a very important topic that we need to consider when we are exploring options for treating lymphedema. Much work needs to be done in the area of treating lymphedema. So much is still unknown. With studies like this and further efforts by all of us, hopefully we will move closer to solving a debilitating problem that affects so many patients but has been neglected for so long.